Join me as I put the $28 Photone light diffuser and phone app up against my $400 Sun System PAR meter. Hi guys, this is Tad Hussey with Kiss Organics and host of the Cannabis Cultivation and Science podcast. And today we're gonna to compare the Photone light diffuser and phone app with the Sun System light meter, two popular options for measuring light in plant growth applications. We'll dive into the features, the pros and cons of each device, and I'll share my personal experience with them. First off though, I wanna talk about why it's important to measure your light levels and some of the terminology you'll need to know to understand what the light meter is telling you. Most plant light meters measure PAR, which stands for photosynthetically active radiation. This represents the range of light the plant can see, which is 400 to 700 nanometers. This is what drives photosynthesis. PPFD stands for photosynthetic photon flux density and measures the amount of photons within that 400 to 700 nanometer range that are hitting a given surface like the surface of your leaves. I see posts all the time of seedlings that are leggy and falling over and this is entirely due to a lack of light and a good example of what happens when you don't measure your light output. At low light levels, it's easier to differentiate with just your eyes, but it's very hard to tell the difference between 700 and 1000 PPFD or know if your plants are the right distance from your light without a light meter. On the flip side, too high of light can cause light bleaching where the bud literally turns white from a lack of chlorophyll. Using a light meter allows us to make sure that we are getting the optimal amount of light that our plant needs based on the crop, its distance from the light source, or even the stage of growth. As a general guide, we want to provide 100 to 200 PPFD for seedlings or clones, 400 to 600 PPFD for veg plants, and 800 to 1200 PPFD for flowering plants, depending on CO2 supplementation. I've had this Sun System PAR meter for years now, and at the time, it was the most affordable, accurate light meter on the market using Apogee sensors. Apogee is a well-known manufacturer in the light sensor industry and really the industry standard for growers looking for a quality PAR meter. Apogee Instruments was founded by Dr. Bruce Bugby, who is a professor of crop physiology at Utah State University, who is well known for his research on lighting and plant growth. Apogee light sensors boast high measurement accuracy with an array of sensors that capture the full spectrum of visible light. It's also built to withstand the rigors of daily use, making it a great choice for commercial growers, and I intentionally paid a few more bucks for the remote sensor so I can reach into the middle of my canopy easily to test different spots and still be able to easily read my PPFD levels on my screen. The Photone light meter is compact, easy to use, and measures a wide range of light types, including LED, HPS, and sunlight. It's also incredibly affordable, making it an attractive option for hobbyists and home growers. The Photone light meter utilizes your cell phone with a downloadable app from the App Store, and then you can purchase access to different light types such as HPS, LED, and sunlight for $5.50 each, or through a subscription option starting at $5.50 a month or $2.50 a month if you plan on buying an annual plan. They also have a lifetime option for a one-time fee of $80. In addition to the phone app, you want a light ray diffuser. These run $28 and clip onto the front of your phone's camera and help improve accuracy. If you don't want to buy the diffuser, you can make a homemade filter with paper, but the diffuser makes things much easier and much more accurate. So in order to measure my full spectrum LEDs to compare with my Sun System light meter, it cost me $33.50. This is a significant savings over buying a professional light meter from Apogee or my current Sun System meter. One of the key features that sets the Sun System PAR meter apart is its ability to measure light intensity in micromoles per second, giving growers a precise understanding of their plant's light requirements. The Photone, on the other hand, configures the camera's spectral responsivity depending on the measurement type to be measured. This is something no hardware PAR sensor can do which they claim makes it a more universal light meter. Photone offers four different measurements for growers, PPFD, DLI, illuminance, and color temperature if you upgrade to the Pro subscription, whereas the PAR meter just gives PPFD readings. For my experiment, I just compared PPFD across both of the devices. Another advantage of the Sun System PAR meter is its durability. It's built with high quality materials and is designed to withstand the elements, making it a perfect tool for outdoor use or around your facility. 
The Photon system uses your phone and a diffuser, so it's really only as durable as your phone. However, one advantage to the Photon is most growers keep their phones on them, so it's not another piece of equipment you have to take around with you in your grow. In terms of ease of use, both light meters are relatively straightforward and have an intuitive interface. On the Sun system, I can switch between types of light and get an instantaneous reading with no need to calibrate or do anything special. I would say it's slightly faster than the Photone, which requires me to get out my phone, open the app, put on the diffuser, and then get a reading. But both are relatively quick, and I don't see a huge advantage to either product here. But the big question that I know you want the answer to is how accurate is the Photone light meter in comparison to the Sun system light meter or similar quality PAR meters? Now, Photone claims an accuracy of plus or minus 20% and that PAR meters, like my Sun System one, will be plus or minus 10%. So possibly a little less accurate, but substantially cheaper. In order to test the light meters out, I took a brand new BIOS Luna LED grow light and placed 15 random pieces of tape under the light. I then measured each spot with both light meters and recorded the results at 2 feet and at 3 feet, giving me 30 total data points. Now one thing to keep in mind is that with both of these meters, even a slight turn of your wrist can change the numbers being displayed on the device as photons hit the sensor from a different angle. I did my best to be as accurate as possible with my positioning, but that is a variable worth mentioning in my results. Across the board, the photon light meter read higher than the Sun System PAR meter. When I got the results, I reached out and shared them with Dominic at Lightray, the makers of the app and the diffuser, and he had some interesting feedback. He looked at the spectrum of the BIOS light, which is very similar to other major LED companies, with large peaks both in the blue and the red. He shared some more information about my Apogee sensor, showing that it may be undermeasuring everything above 670 nanometers and below 475 nanometers due to a spectral mismatch. Basically, it's quite challenging for a meter to measure accurately across 400 to 700 nanometers, and that's why we see a 10 to 20% accuracy range on the Apogee sensor in regards to light source spectral error. Photone deals with the same issues in regards to spectral mismatch to the ideal PAR response. However, Photone's measurement algorithm can correct for these mismatch errors, leading to a more accurate representation, according to Dominic. He also shared that they have updated their measurement algorithms on Android, and the upgrade to iOS will be coming in the next few months, giving increased accuracy than what I'm currently seeing on my iPhone 15 Pro that I used for this test. Honestly, I was impressed with how close the Photone light meter was to my Sun System PAR meter. I had Dr. Ben Higgins at KISS run a statistical analysis, and he found no statistical significance between the two sets of data. And based on the data presented here, we are now offering the light ray diffusers on our website at kissorganics.com for growers interested in getting one for themselves. When it comes down to it, the biggest difference between these two light meters is the price. At $28 for a diffuser plus some in-app purchases, the Photone is a steal, while the Sun System PAR meter or equivalent Apogee PAR meter's price tag of $400 or more may be out of reach for some growers. But is the Apogee worth the extra cost? In my opinion, I think there are some circumstances where a dedicated PAR meter makes sense. For instance, in a commercial facility, it may be better to have a single meter that can be shared across various growers versus an app and diffuser that would need to be on everyone's phone. Some cultivators may not be comfortable downloading apps from the app store or using their phone for work purposes. And there are also high quality meters from Apogee that are more expensive that will calculate DLI or average PAR over a period of time, which could be useful for a greenhouse or outdoor grower where light quality can change throughout the day or season. I've had great experience using both light meters, and I think measuring light is essential for optimizing plant growth. Whether you're a hobbyist or a commercial grower, having a reliable light meter can make all the difference in the world. So in conclusion, both the Apogee and Photone light meters have their strengths and weaknesses, but if I had to recommend one, it would depend on your specific needs or budget. If you're looking for an affordable, easy to use solution, go with the Photone. But if you're willing to invest in a premium product or want additional features, Apogee is worth considering. Thanks for watching, and if you're interested in learning more about plant care, be sure to check out my other videos. Let me know in the comments what your experiences have been with light meters. I'd love to hear from you.